underneath the earth, not far below our feet. A both fascinating and terrifying geological phenomena sometimes occur when we least expect it. The sudden collapse of the ground we stand on, and even sometimes our houses are built on, leaving anywhere from a small ditch to a massive crater in the ground. A phenomenon known as sinkholes. Here to explain these phenomena in greater detail, we at the Michigan Geological Survey have interviewed senior geologist and leading expert on Michigan karsts, Tyrone J. Black. In this interview, we go over some major questions you may have on sinkholes such as, how do they form? What areas of Michigan are vulnerable to sinkhole formations? Can you tell if a sinkhole is forming? Can human processes affect the formation of sinkholes? How have sinkholes affected Michigan? Are there ways someone can determine if there's a sinkhole in their property? And Michigan's geologic history and how it affects the sinkhole formation in certain areas. Okay, the basic principle of sinkholes is dissolution of minerals at depth and the collapse of materials of formations of, or materials into the void that's that's left. In, they can be very large. Uh, we have sinkholes in Northeast Michigan, uh, such as a collapse valley called Mystery Valley currently, that's over a mile long and quarter mile, nearly quarter mile wide. There are, it is about 50 to 60 feet of material subsidence. Uh, all that volume of material has essentially disappeared into the subsurface because of the dissolution or removal of gypsum from a formation uh, further down. And the roof of that area was not able to support lithology and regolith above it, and so that's all collapsed. Then there are the smaller areas where we have limestone has been dissolved and the soils have uh, been washed down into openings because there's been a, a, a channel formed in a void that these uh, soils are washing down into. Uh, those tend to be much smaller features than, than uh, the large ones in northeast Michigan. The, the, the uh, large sinkholes across northern uh, area of the southern peninsula have essentially developed in the retreat of the last glaciation. Uh, there may be some sinkholes that are buried uh, that had collapsed before that retreat. And there's some evidence uh, in quarries and, uh, and other information that they exist but are essentially plugged in and not expressed at the surface. The formations uh, from the Detroit River Group, that's a group of formations with that name, they have uh, lots of evaporites uh, such as gypsum and hydrite and maybe a little salt and natural fractures have allowed groundwater down into those cause, causing a flushing action, uh, removal of those evaporites. There are also uh, Tawas area, Michigan formation evaporites of, of gypsum are near surface. Also a little bit in the thumb. There have been uh, collapses in farmlands in the, in the thumb area of Michigan. Usually in the order of maybe 10 or 20 foot diameter and 15 feet deep down in the Jenison Granville area and the uh, I-131 bridge uh, in Grand Rapids have experienced collapses due to the Michigan formation evaporites being near the surface and groundwaters dissolving those away. In the process of forming, uh, there are some sinkholes. You, you start to see some subsidence. Most of the time that I would get calls when I was working was uh, when there was a sudden collapse. The, the, the um, breaking of whatever hard pan or initial surface and you'd have an open hole develop which might only be a foot in diameter a few inches in diameter and, and subsidence around it a little bit and, and so there would be this process uh, of the sinkhole had been forming the, this void and when it finally breaches the surface it, it's in its final stages that actually of forming um, to that window to the surface. Yeah, so we'd you say it's mostly, there's not really much of a precursor. It's usually like a very small <coughs> substance and then just drop. Yeah, yeah there right. may be a substance and, and then that final loss of cohesion in the center that had the most stress. There's a geologic definition and a general definition apparently going, uh, going around 
you can have sinkholes that are man-made that are caused by fractures or breaks in uh, sewage lines or water lines that have broken and start washing out material and flushing it down along the corridor of the line and, and having surface uh, failure. One of the frequent sinkhole complaints I got that I would investigate that were man-made a number of homes when they're built, if they're in a wooded area, the builder or whoever prepared the site would bury slash brush stumps whatever in one corner of the property or some area of the property and between 20 and 50 years later you would have a sinkhole develop because of the the rotting of the woods and the subsidence of the, of the soils above it and normally we could tell that uh, by augering down and uh, we'd find the, all these rotted wood chips and then a solid bottom to it. It's the burial of, of the, the waste wood mm -hmm. when it prepares a number of sites. Do you see that pretty frequently with like newer construction sites where they you know just chop <clears throat> everything down and just deposit it somewhere else? It was pretty common. That was an easy way to dispose of material, just bury it. If the material was buried, they expect uh, soil subsidence at some point in the future depending on how much material was buried. There have even been some old logging camps that have shown up where people built around them and uh, 50 years later the, the sawdust pile or slash pile that they thought was uh, stable ground is rotting away in, in their subsidence. There was a solution salt mining going on in the Detroit River. It developed a sinkhole. Uh, almost the entire interior of the island became a blue hole. The collapse of the old mine. There, there were no people there, so it was not a that kind of a disruption. But on US 23, it, it was involved the uh, Michigan Formation. Uh, one lane, about 10 foot area circle, collapsed in US 23. Uh, and the four lane uh, and the highway department had to uh, close that area off and they investigated and rebuilt over that trying to make sure that if they had another dissolution of gypsum because of all the construction that had been done it changed the water drainage which focused the water across a portion of the gypsum uh, subcrop right there and dissolved this hole in it so they uh, had to rearrange drainage uh, as, as well as uh, how they filled it and then add reinforced fill so it would sag and not have a catastrophic failure to uh, make that highway safe again. You know, the, there are certain areas that are susceptible to a geological sinkhole feature and it, it's where gypsum is within 80 feet of the surface and you have coarse materials where some of that has been going on and those areas are being built upon especially down southwestern Michigan. There are sinkholes related to some more minor gypsum deposits down in Monroe County uh, which is mainly agri agricultural, but it's becoming urbanized and they've encountered issues. And uh, it's not simply an issue of foundations, but water, groundwater quality, because these are open conduits that take surface waters directly down into the ground. Those conduits tend to be closer to the surface and much of the, the groundwaters that are, are for aquifer is a little bit deeper, but it still has to be, you have, still have to be careful about it. We have some maps on where sinkhole areas are, uh, where some of these formations are, but we don't have a good handle on it because m most of the time, the issues are not reported unless there's a lot of them, uh, such as the Monroe County area where they have special notice, uh, they are monitoring them, mapping them, that sort of thing. Uh, up in Presqu'ile County near Roger City, there are some issues with limestone karst, post-glacial development of opening of fissures and fractures by groundwater and dissolving uh, little fractures. And, and again, it's a groundwater issues uh, that are in play there where they have thin overburden. And in one case, they 
they were testing, examining the area. They flushed some dye down the toilet of one house. And within a matter of several hours, a house quarter mile away had colored water in their tap water, showing that uh, how quickly some, some of these things can happen or, or move about in, in karst areas. Then there are places in the UP, uh, the Upper Peninsula, where you have to get a clean water sample in a well before you can get a permit to build a home. There was one case they went uh, 1,200 feet. Uh, they got a clean water sample, built the house, started the septic system. Six months later, got another water sample. It was contaminated with E. coli uh, because of the, the fractured nature of the bedrock in the area. The large sinkholes uh, go across from Alpena County, the Alpena area, all the way across the west of Traverse City to Leelanau County. We have some of these large sinkholes. Their base formation is the Detroit River Group, which in areas up there, the surface of the sinkhole to the base is um, over 900 feet, maybe 1,200 feet in some cases. These are sinkholes, there, there's probably a cavernous system down there, but it's so far below water level, uh, even if we could access it, we wouldn't have a really a way of exploring it. And these are sinkholes that have mainly developed, as I said before, post-glacial, as the glacier retreated. A lot of the stresses that the glaciers had put upon the surface of Michigan and the pressure of the glaciers cut more or less forcing fresh water down into a lot of our uh, formations, making excellent drinking water, but also making avenues for that groundwater to go through formations. I'm interested in, in establishing a, uh, a few seismic stations that might be good listening posts because several years ago I heard are interviewing some people up in the Onaway area near Roger City that in the middle of the night they could hear rocks falling in cavity areas underground. You know, and hear, you know, like a rock fall, these rocks tumbling. And I'd love to be able to get some listening gear in some way of listening for those and maybe pinpointing where some of that's occurring because we have groundwaters coming out at, in Lake Huron uh, that's been documented to be saturated with respect to gypsum. Uh, so water still moving through the system and removing gypsum. So it, it's at least 45 cubic meters per year out of one sinkhole. And there are several out there where water's coming out uh, in these volumes. It does not surprise me that we would be having more collapse at some point. But right now, with the glaciers had thoroughly stressed the area, and, and until those stresses build up again in the karst system, uh, it could be a long time before we see more sinkholes of that size and magnitude develop. And that concludes some major topics on Michigan sinkholes. Sinkholes are one of the most frequent topics the survey receives calls about. If you are worried about the possibility of sinkholes on your property, check out the additional links and resources in the description below.